Hey guys, welcome back to EIS Alaska. Hey guys. So we're just down on the fishtail today. Um, got some little chores, little tasks to do before our next halibut trip here. So uh, we got oil to change on the generator. Uh, we have some line to add to the reel. Yeah, we picked up a new spool of ground line. Mm -hmm. Since we, uh, we took off those uh, two shots of Kilon from our from our reel. Yeah, we, we suspect they were causing the uh, the the Lovejoy breaking problem. I'm gonna be stretching some line on the dock out here. Take you guys out and show you. So yeah, we picked up a roll of 11 30 second uh, lead ground line. Yep. So this is man line. Um, this is 1800 feet, which is 300 fathoms. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about a shot of line, it's a uh, one one hundred fathom shot. Yep. It's and 100 you talk fathoms. about a skate of line, it's eighteen hundred yep. feet or three hundred fathoms. Yep. So that's what we use is a uh, hundred hundred fathom shots, and uh, and we mark them at twenty five fathoms, at fifty fathoms, and seventy five fathoms. That helps us do a couple of things. When we set our gear. We use the, the line, the ground line is buoy line. Mm -hmm. We don't carry extra buoy line that, you know, we tie on and feed out. We just use the stuff off the reel. So by having it marked at 25, 50, and 75 fathoms, I can just tell Matt, put 60 fathoms on. He knows to bring it out to the center point and add a little bit more. Or if I say, yeah, we're in 25 fathoms of water, put on 30, 35 fathoms of buoy line, he just knows to run it out to the first 25 fathom mark add a little bit more and we're golden. Mm -hmm. It's nice and simple. Everything comes on the reel, everything goes off the reel. We don't have coils and shots laying around that we yeah, need to bunch secure. Of extra clutter. Also, if we tie. had just buoy line, we'd have to pull it with a crab block or something like that. Yeah. And that just yeah, like would. complicates stuff. Yeah, it's so just a really easy clean like setup it. for us like that. Mm -hmm. um, the other reason that we like marks on this is if that we part it off, we know where we're at. We know mm -hmm. how much gear is left in the water off of that shot. When we go back to the other end and pick it up and pull it, we can compare it and see if we got it all back or not. Mm -hmm. Just helps us keep track of things easily. Yep. So we do need to tack a little bit of line onto this one that we broke the other day. We have a little bit of leftover from one of these coils. Um, this one will probably have a little bit of leftover. They're usually just slightly longer. When they, they don't measure these out, they, they just weigh them, I believe, mm -hmm. to get the weight. And, uh, and that's what they go by. So uh, we're just getting set up on the dock here. What we'll do is we'll run this line down there to a, a 300 foot or 50 fathom uh, spot. It's like down towards the end of this dock. And then we'll bring it back. You know, that's 100 fathoms. We'll tape it off. We'll cut it. And then we'll also have uh, a mark 25 fathoms down and then the midpoint and we'll just put black tape on those and then you know that's our 25, our 50, and our 75 fathom mark. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, that's 100 foot where the tape currently is. Okay. We'll grab this, go for a little walk. So that's 100. So another 50 foot and that will be our first mark. Yep. There's a, there's a love knot where we started tacking on. We will splice that up. Yep, so this is a nice new little shot that we have. So that's a hundred right there, huh? Yep, halfway. So I gotta, I gotta go 50? Uh, yes, 50 for the first mark. I'm guessing that there is a very faint mark on the dock there. is right here. Let's mark it in the green <laughs> dock scum. <laughs> so this will be our 25 fathom mark and then 
our 75 fathom mark because we'll be uh, doubling the line back. Good. All right, so we grab the tape again. Yep. Another 100 foot. That will be the midpoint. thought we had was correct and and uh, we knew that we had 33 fathom shots so that black one right there yeah sure enough <clears throat> track yeah so what we've always done is just is just stretch the end and then just go around this pole right here drag it back down and then once we get down there we can tape the end walk back to our um our other marks and mark them it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be close So back on the uh, weak points, we also had a lot of guys comment on our pressure relief valve yeah. on the valve itself. Yeah. And uh, it was hissing. If you listen in the video, it was hissing. It mm -hmm. wasn't squealing. But then I didn't have it open all the way either, and that's why. And, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's exactly why. Because I was trying to think back, like, gosh, is our pressure relief valve stuck or? Or not working properly. I think it was. Mm -hmm. I just didn't have it cranked up all the way. Um, maybe it can be adjusted a little bit, but we'll see. W once we get this rigged up, we'll we'll take a look at it. But I'm not going to be concerned about it, honestly. Maybe if we get to the point where we're hung up that bad again, we'll just go ahead and tie it off on the rail and mm -hmm. pull on it. I think it really was just the combination of factors that yeah that led to that. And just the, the same circumstance of it being uh, key lawn and being straight up and down and mm -hmm. flat calm and yeah, just happened. Oh, wow. Well, let this roll a line. Yeah, so this stuff was actually interesting. Um, before you get too excited here, it actually does Decide. pay uh, to uh, read the directions once in a while, so you'll see from this end counterclockwise so that's oh, important you flipped that line over on me didn't you I was gonna see if you were gonna catch it nope I already yep. set it up the way it was gonna be pulled so this feeds out of the center <laughs> and uh, as you go it'll just kind of turn into this cone and at some point it'll fall over and you'll just kind of have to hand feed it out slowly mm -hmm. it's just towards the end the last maybe 25-30 fathoms, but yep, we'll get skinny. If you try and take the stuff off the outside or from the other way, what happens is that you will make yourself a terrible mess. The line will not coil correctly, and it'll also hockle, which is the worst thing ever. Like hockling is when line does this, and you'll hockle the line, and you'll destroy it. Mm -hmm. You'll create weak spots on there, so. It'll be fine now, but until when that gets under tension, then it just flips those strands out of the orientation and they become weak and they'll break. Mm -hmm. And so it's important not to do that. Yep. So we're gonna follow the directions on this one. Good plan. So kind of a nice day. We had a heck of a storm come through the last few days. So this stuff is made by contract 
Western Corporation. Yep. If anyone's curious, there's some info for you. Yep. Little, uh, comments wondering what kind of line we use. CWC Continental Western Corp. So this is leaded. It's got a very you can see it right there. So it's three strand. It's got an orange tracer and the strand that has the orange tracer it also has a little tiny lead little tiny hunk. You probably can't see it but it's there. It was shiny so they can hopefully you guys can see it. So that basically just changes this from more of a neutral buoyancy to a sinking line. It doesn't sink real fast but it does sink. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's the nice thing about using it for buoy line is that you won't have a bunch of buoy line floating on the surface and have to worry about a different vessel running over it and parting off your buoys. That is a, a real concern and something that you have to look out for when you use a uh, a lot of guys will just use floating line on the buoy end instead of having some sinking line mm -hmm. and uh, if you're not paying attention you can run over it you get it caught in your wheel if you get enough down there it can shut you down it'll, it'll stall your engine out and you'll be asking for a tow home um, the the other scenario is that it does cut it off and you can still travel but then you're gonna have to get to town and get on the grid or get pulled and remove it and that's, yep. that's time and money always the risk of it ruining your cutlass bearing too yep it'll so get it wraps around your shaft it'll get wrapped up on the shaft right there it'll, it'll wear out your cutlass bearing it'll destroy it so it's just something that you you really have to be careful of yeah so and, we like uh, to and, and on the fishing side of it if it's your gear and you get run over you lose that buoy it's it's gone the end of that setup is gone mm -hmm. whether it's a long line or it's connected to a crab pot so it's something that you want to be aware of using leaded line solves that you won't mm -hmm. get all that line stretched out in the water yep all you'll have is a little a1 buoy yeah mm -hmm. so, all right well, we'll get these straps cut yeah i guess we always just peeled it off right here huh to give it a mm -hmm. just to allow Tried. it to to pull up out of the middle of this a little bit easier so we'll just do this by hand and then we'll uh we'll use a reel to put it back on and uh, we won't be able to tension it up a lot but we can tension it up a little bit so it's not too loose there so the first thing is just getting it uh, getting it fathomed out and marked uh, we have some we have some gany material yeah, I guess it's inside good. now but it's just two different colors. One's yellow, one's red. It comes that way, dyed. Um, and then it's really durable. It doesn't fade, it doesn't wear out really. It gets a little bit hard to see after a while, but we put like three of them in a row over the course of about this much. So, you know, rarely do you, do you miss them. And when you're setting buoy line out on either end, you know that you're looking for it anyway. So uh, it just, makes it real easy so we'll get take a couple of pieces of that about that long and we'll tuck it into the line with the fid and then we'll also splice uh splice our sea link on the end and the sea link is what we use to join the shots together without having to tie a knot this stuff feeds out pretty good here you just have to be careful and and not try and pull it out too fast because this stuff is like it's like coiled on a roll basically and then they slide it out it must it's probably like a metal shaft that they can collapse or something or maybe yeah. it's tapered i don't know but at any rate this stuff is coiled it starts here on the shaft and and fills it up just like the long line reel would and so it'll uncoil from the inside out and at some point you know these walls get pretty skinny and you don't want them falling over so you just want to take your time. If it falls over, then it just it, it starts to become hard. You're gonna spend a lot of time to not end up with a giant mess. So yeah, let's uh, let's start getting the stuff stretched out. We'll start getting some uh, some new ceiling spliced onto it. Okay, we're just getting our supplies together here. 
Don't need a whole lot for this. Black tape. Got our torch for in the end. Um, now it's got our tracer material that we'll use to mark it. So we've got some yellow and those are 25s. And then we use the red for the 50, which is the middle of the shot. So just cut these all to the same length um, and take a torch and burn the ends. So we'll burn the end on these so they don't fray. This stuff was braided so it doesn't fray real bad, but it does fray. Um, burning it will prevent it from, yep. from falling apart on us. See the end is pretty there, so hit it with the torch. I think we're about out of gas here, aren't we? Good. I'll just pre-cut a bunch. And, uh, I should only need like six of these. Three shots, two per middle. Well, the harbor has sure quieted down. Yeah, it Mostly sure just the uh, long liners. Yeah. Well, while Matt does that, I guess I can grab this end and start dragging it, huh? Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna drag this off the back of the boat here. This stuff feeds out pretty easy, so. It's not too bad. So we'll stretch this out and then uh, we'll just come back with a with a piece of tracer line and we'll just give it a tuck or two wherever the um, wherever the marks need to be. Just take it around the pole like that. That makes it a little easier. We don't have to actually like stretch it out on a 600 foot spot. So this stuff on the dock right here looks just like this did when it was brand new. You can see the difference. Just all the mud and sand and dirt that gets in it. You wouldn't believe the amount of mud that this stuff retains when it comes up. Sometimes you just snap the line and you just see all the mud come off of it. The other thing is people don't realize how extremely abrasive line is. These are cuts in the stainless steel that it makes from, from pulling it. Just the grit embedded in there and even just the line itself will wear that stainless like that. So these are spots that we've filled many times now. About every year or so we come in here and we'll fill these and grind them back down a little bit. And uh, when they start to get too deep, you know, they'll, they'll get as sharp as a knife. And so you kind of got to watch it. You want to keep those filled and, and smooth back down or you'll end up cutting your line right at the rail one day. So it does it to that and it also does it to the, the loop on our, our setting, um, our, the ring that we run the line through when we set it also wears that ring down too and it'll start to cut through it and we'll have to go in there. And we just use our TIG torch and and uh, just build it back up with some stainless rod and smooth it off with the grinder and we're good to go for a while again. Yeah. Until next time. All right, so that's our starting point right here. This is going to burn this a little bit because it's going to get spliced anyways. 
we were terminating like crab line or something, we'd put more tape on there, we'd burn it, and then we'd tape it again. And then you just get a nice finished end right there that's not gonna fall apart later. You know, once this stuff starts to unravel, it's really annoying, you know, and you just ruin line like that. So you wanna keep it taped up and keep the ends burnt. It really stops that from happening. A little bit that will be plenty and uh, we'll just start stretching this next one we'll grab a couple of pieces of tracer line and uh, mark it as we go have a little piece left over here uh, now we'll go down and we'll just tuck uh, one of our tracer lines in there at the 25 and the 50 and the 75 so 25 and 75 will be at the same spot the 50 is at the midpoint and uh, and then we'll start splicing sea links on and I guess before we tear down the reel we can just fire up and get a spool though Sure, why not? Get that done. And uh, I suppose you guys are probably wondering what's going on here in the background. Um, <laughs> you can see there's the big boat. It's all tarped up and hidden, so. Yeah, you might also notice the name is <laughs> actually sanded off on the bow. Um, I think we might have said it in one video, but we have named her the Emerald Isle. Yeah, so we're just waiting for. Uh, vinyl go up there but yeah yeah so we're all tented up for our big project it's just uh it's white vinyl it's a plastic and uh you put it on there and then you put some heat on it and it shrinks up tight so it's really durable it's like seven mil thick um tough as nails this was had some 50 50 knot winds a couple days ago and you can't even tell i also have some uh tape that you can get for seams and everything this stuff will shrink up also and uh, just for extra durability we just where our frame is we just put slats there that just keeps large expanses from starting to flap around they'll flap around and eventually they'll wear on the frame underneath and get a hole in it and then that's where your tears start so yeah we're all buttoned up real good it's all watertight so we can do our fiberglass work this winter and uh, not worry about leaks and fixing tarps every time the wind blows. Nothing worse than wet fiberglass. Yeah. All right. Yep. With our tracers on. Got this full of them. So we'll use a fid. Basically just metal. You can use this to force in between the strands creates a pocket and you can feed your line through if you're splicing. Um, if you're putting tracers in, you can push it through there. You can use your fingers too. This stuff will wear them out though. It's pretty stiff, pretty unforgiving. This man line, you pretty much need a, a fid. Your fingers will thank you. They will. You can do it without it, but yeah, it's not fun. Line comes in lots of different flavors and varieties. This is hard lay, which means it's basically a very tight uh, twist on the strands. Um, there's different types of long line gear. There's medium lay, there's soft lay. They're much more like soft, limp line that, you know, will just pile up. This stuff coils. Just do a single tuck like that, or maybe two tucks it and fall out. It shouldn't fall out though. So you twist the line, loosen it a little bit. Stick your 
chunk through. Struggle to stick it through because I didn't give myself enough room. Then we'll just come through and tuck those all the way through. So there's just a little tail left at the end. Nothing to it. But to do it. Take a little bit of time, but the results are worth it later. Pretty much everybody's done for the year, except some long liners. Maybe a little pot fishing going on for cod. That's about it now. That's 200 foot. And somewhere back in here we have an old mark. Right there. Okay, well I guess this is just the center, so then I'll just add a couple more. Yeah. You can go here, huh? Start uh, doing ice splices. And, uh, yeah. Some my ice splices. Splice on our sea links. Do we have enough? I think we have a whole chain of them, actually. All right, got us some jingle jingle, bling bling. Mm -hmm. So these are sea links, guys. It's got a notch in each one, put them together, makes a link. Fast way to hook shots of line together without a knot. Um, Works good for long line gear, snap gear in particular. So nothing much to this. Um, I just removed the tape. The ends are burnt. I was just gonna keep the ends from getting all unraveled and fraying the individual strands. Uh, this type of line, you know, it melts good, leaves a good end like that. It's pretty hard to break apart again. Other types of line like soft lay lines or nylons um, a lot of times when you go to splice them, you do the same thing, you tape it and cut it, remove the tape, and then a lot of times burning won't really give you this good edge right here that prevents it from fraying, so what you'll do is you'll just wrap tape around it again. It's kind of a hassle, but it's just what you have to do. Other, otherwise, you just end up with this, you know, this big mess, essentially, and, and your, your, uh, your splice doesn't come out good like it should, so um, it doesn't matter which side you start on these. It all ends up being the same, so we're just gonna put that there. Turn on this a bit. Let me get just gotta slide down a little bit here. Get on the correct side. I usually have my line going back this way when I'm splicing, so I'm just gonna bring this back. Oh, not too far. Something about like that. I'm looking just to two tucks and a taper. I'm gonna end up with a nice end that way. I usually make these pretty tight. I don't like them like all flopping around, kind of like them, you know, more like that, huh Matt? Yeah. So I'm just gonna pull that in pretty tight like that. Doesn't matter where you start, under which strand you start. First one's kind of weird. Especially with a camera in your face. And you're rusty. Haven't done this for a while, huh? Never rusty. I can splice in my sleep. <laughs> so we're just going to take the strand that's closest to us here. Tuck it through. Snug it up 
a little bit. Now you kind of see that, that these go in order right here. So we're going to keep them in order. You tuck that one next, then that one ends up being all weird. So orange is going to be next. And uh, I'm just going to, I just go over under. So I'm going over the one that I just tucked and under the next one. Same thing. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. And uh, you know, in terms of this, we're not looking for like knot strength. Um, very rarely do you ever break these off. Usually when you break them, it's because it's caught somewhere, it's chafing through it and it parts the line. So we don't really worry about the strength of our splices, you know, getting it to whatever the 95% of the line strength that it should be. It's not crucial in this. So you can either start it over like this, which ends up kind of fat, or you can even come in under on this one and bury this first one back in. There's probably a couple of different lines of thoughts on this that it's not as good, that it's not as strong. If you want a really nice tapered splice, it does work out good. And you'll see in a minute, it looks a little sloppy right now, but and then you're going to just come right back in here again. And you're going over, so that one actually kind of got like a double tuck in a way. And what I'm doing here is I'm just twisting these, that just helps it kind of stay tight. You want to give these a little bit of a twist when you put them through. If you just, if you just pull it through, it tends to just like kind of like loosen it up and make it floppy. So you just give it a little tiny twist. Once you get that first set of tucks in, then you can just go to town. And it's simple. It doesn't matter where you start. Just going over and under, over and under. So I'm just going to do two tucks on this and then I'll taper it. That's going to be plenty of strength for this. So once again, they're all evened up again now. And it uh, doesn't matter which one I start on. And now I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to taper it. I'm just going to pick one of them. And it's going to get one tuck. And normally when you're tape, when you're splicing, you're kind of moving like in a counterclockwise and just because it's comfortable but now I'm actually gonna go back the other way you can see how this one is here this one is here this one's even with the orange one so now I'm just gonna grab the next one in line I'm going backwards and I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna tug it once and now we've got one two this one's the same as this one I'm going to tuck it again. And now I have a taper. And the purpose of the taper, a lot of times it doesn't matter, but it just makes your line nicer. You don't end up with all these in one spot where you go from this diameter to the line to double the diameter of the line. So if this is slipping through a crack or something, once these are trimmed, it'll go through easier than just hitting a big blob. Same thing as if the, you're hauling this through like a crab block, it'll go through gentle mm -hmm. and it won't just hit a big solid blob and want to get tossed out of the shivs or out of the block and, you know, create problems and a dangerous situation. So tapering your line, you know, not only makes it look good, it adds some strength, but uh, more than anything, when it's feeding in and out of pulleys or shivs, or just anything coming over the roller right there it just comes through nicer mm -hmm. it lays better it doesn't take much time either it just takes a second yep so that's really that i guess that's good i guess i just usually do two maybe i usually do three i forget i guess i usually just do if it's a butt splice i'll just do two tucks on each one and taper it but i'm going to do this one some more so looks a little short it looks a little short uh, so too. There'll be just right enough on. on that one to get Triple its third tuck. tuck. So we're just basically just adding one more tuck to each one now. Yeah, it's butt splices. I'll just do 
two full tucks on each side and then taper and that's plenty enough you're never going to pull it apart yeah that looks better there it is so that looks a little bit wonky right there but usually what i do is just throw it on the ground and the back too slippery nope just roll it around like that some green green gunk on it yep make it look a little weathered that green dock slime right there that actually treats that line and will make it last forever <laughs> so really that's it um this stuff isn't quite so critical to burn it on these ends because it's sliced and the type of line it is if it was a softer medium lay like a nylon you would definitely want to burn it again and just kind of helps keep it from from going wild same thing i just give this a little twist it makes it tighter when you cut it and I'm just gonna cut it about the same length as that. Something about like that. Cut that one. And then we'll just hit it with the torch real quick. Just bend this line a little bit like that, then you're not risking burning it. And just give those ends a little lick. You can see the lead right there. These will fray a little bit, it's no big deal. They're not gonna come undone. And, uh, and that's it. So nice. now we'll do that five more times and we'll be able to link these up as we pull them on. I think I'll go down there and cut those tracers. Nothing too scientific here. Just like that. All right, guys, so went down there, got all our marker tracers uh, weaved in, spliced in. Looks like dad got all his ceilings put in too. Yeah. Alright guys, all done with the splicing and marking the line. So fire up the fishtail here and spool it on. Spool it on the reel. Pretty now, doesn't it? 
Yeah, that's nice. Nice and bright and new. Yeah, it's actually hard to believe that that line turns out green over time. Um, yeah. I guess just from whatever. But it's actually listed the color as silver. If you look at the listing. And, uh, you know, it's just a silver gray. And this is, that's the true color. It, it, it does turn that dark after a while. You can also see the yellow tracer right there, how dirty it is. Let's so see how much wear there is on that shiv right there. <laughs> you to have one of those made, huh? We do, yeah. 